All right, so now that the much awaited Pico is here, we're going to check it out and see what we can do with it. So let's open it up. It comes in a small pouch. And once we open it up, it seems like it comes as a bare chip without any of the headers on. So now we're going to need to solder on the headers. All right, so we're going to take a little while and do that real quick. All right, so now that the headers are on the Pico, we're ready to connect it to our laptop and get down to some programming. Now, the first step you got to do is hold down the white color boot cell button that you find on the Pico and then plug it into your laptop. Now, this could be a Mac or a Raspberry Pi and Windows. It could work the same way. And this will show up just like a regular uh, file system. All right, so now that we connected the Pico to our laptop through USB while holding down the boot cell button, it's gonna show up to us like a USB mass storage like so. It's gonna have an index.htm file inside it and also an info underscore uf2.txt file. Now to get MicroPython onto it such that we can start writing our code, what we need to do is go on to the getting started with Pico and on the Raspberry Pi website and you see that we have this link that we can go on to and right up at the top you see uh, three options and the first one is the board specifications it gives you all the specs also gives you a pinout diagram that you can refer to while building your circuits what we are interested in is in the getting started with micro Python part and you will see that there is a download UF2 button over here. Uh, click download UF2 and all you need to do is drag and drop this into the USB mass storage folder. That's it. Now it's automatically going to configure itself such that we can run Python, MicroPython on it. The next thing we need is an IDE to write our code and for this Thony IDE is recommended. So you can just search for Thony, click on the first link, and you have this for Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it also comes already installed on the Raspberry Pi. I'm on a Windows computer, so I'm gonna choose Windows. It's a pretty small installation. All right, let's, we're gonna set up Thony real quick. And it works with the Raspberry Pi Pico out of the box. We just need a small setting to be configured. So I'm just going to accept the defaults over here. And yeah, let's create a deep desktop icon as well. All right, so that's all done. Let's go ahead and launch the Thony IDE. And the first thing that we need to do is go over to run and choose select interpreter. And here in the drop down, you will find an option called MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. So go ahead and select that and you can leave this port to be detected automatically. Say okay. And now you will see on the shell that it shows the MicroPython and this tells you that is connected and we're able to code on the Pico. So now for us to write a code, we will start a new file and what we will do is say from machine import pin. So this is the, you can refer to this in the uh, MicroPython uh, SDK document that's available on the Raspberry Pi website and we'll put a link for that in the description. Let's also import the time module, which will be useful when we're blinking the LED. 
So now we'll create a variable for the LED and first we'll try to blink the LED that is on the board. And for this we create an object of type pin. The on in onboard LED is at pin 25. Now, very simply, what we will do is let's turn on this LED by saying LED dot value one. Then we will give it a second delay, and then we will do LED dot value zero. So you should be able to see the LED on board blink. All right, so now that we got the Raspberry Pi Pico's inbuilt LED blinking, our next task is to get an external LED blinking and using uh, MicroPython to do that. So to begin, we need an LED. We need a resistor, which is of at least 220 ohms or 330 ohms, and we need two male-to-male -male jumper wires. Uh, we begin with first just connecting the LED across the middle of the breadboard with the anode to my left and the cathode to my right. I connect the resistor on the right to the cathode and then plug it into the ground rail on the side. Next, I connect the ground pin and you can look up the pin out diagram of the Raspberry Pi Pico to get to know which pins are ground. Uh, I'm using the one which is on, my, on the right of the board on my right and it's the third from the bottom and I plug it into the side such that I get the entire rail to be ground. Then I'm going to use GPIO 15 which is the last pin to my left. I'm going to plug, connect that to the anode of the uh, LED. To use a different pin what we will do is let's say we'll say LED 1 and this time we'll use GPIO 15. And let's make a program where the LED continues to blink until we stop it. And here we can also say LED one dot value, set it to one, and also then turn it off in the same way. And let's run it and we should be able to see LED on our breadboard blink every one second. And there you go. So as expected, the Pico seems to be a very interesting and easy to use device. And the advantage of being able to write and run Python code makes it even better. So we look forward to seeing you create many different projects with this and also using this for many of your maker adventures.